Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and um, a puzzle by Arbitry today who we featured a couple of months ago and it was a very in interesting puzzle then. So we'll see what we get today. It feels a little familiar. I'll say a little bit more about this puzzle in a moment because I've got a couple of things to say. Uh, but first of all, 1st of April is the date of the launch of our Patreon hunt, Dangerous to Know. So get onto Patreon. Check it out and um, submit a solution by the 20th. That's the plan. Um, give it a try. It's, it's going to be an interesting one, I think. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. So that's on Patreon, along with all the other content we put up on Patreon, which is plenty. Um, there are also plenty of apps already available, including Lion Sudoku and Arrow Sudoku, like the rule sets in this puzzle. Um, and of course you can get our merch, like this wonderful hoodie that I'm modelling today, or this cap that I could also model, but I won't wear it throughout the video. Um, and Sven Sudoku Pad, they're all on the links under the video, along with the catalogue of all our puzzles, so you can check it and tell me if we've solved an arbitrary puzzle even before two months ago. I don't think so. Um, but I was going to say a couple of things about the grid. Now the first is, that something about this pattern reminds me of a puzzle that I got absolutely stuck on in a live stream when we were doing the Guess the Setter competition. Um, and I just couldn't solve it and had to get a tip before the next video. <laughs> I hope it's not that trick, which I don't even remember. It seemed to, it ended up having to have ones in all the little squares for some reason that I don't even remember now. There may have been another rule going on, I honestly don't know, but I hope it's not that one. Um, anyway, that's one thing. The other thing is that the letters look, the puzzle's called Around the Block, and I mean, I guess we have blocks that, that are in the puzzle, that's why. But they do also look a bit like letters, spelling out, I thought maybe at first cool, but then I thought coo. And that reminds me of what's going on outside the window by which I operate. Um, so two or three weeks ago, there were a, a pigeon or two hanging around a bit more often than usual outside the window. And I would occasionally kind of go near the window to scare them away. I don't really like pigeons. They're, they're very literally feral birds that uh, make a nuisance of themselves in towns and stuff. So I'm not a big fan of a pigeon. Um, and, and I would sort of scare them away a bit, not, not viciously, but just try and get them going. Um, and then a few days later, there's a window box outside my window that we have, and the pigeon was sitting in it. And I was quite irritated by that and scared it away again. Um, and then a couple of days later, I realised these pigeons kept on turning up, and I opened the window actually to see if they were doing a lot of pigeon poo because I was quite irritated at this point and what I noticed was a little white egg in the window box <laughs> the pigeons are using it as a nest um, and that changed my approach a bit I have to say I mean a pigeon's still a pigeon but a parent is a parent and uh, if they're using that as a nest well I've decided to be a little kinder and I generally leave the blind down almost all the day. Maybe I raise it once a day and close it once a day or something. And we've kind of reached an accommodation when the blind is open. I see the, the mummy pigeon huddling in the nest a lot and the daddy pigeon kind of sitting on the side eyeing me, but not actually hostilely. So I think we've kind of reached some sort of accommodation and there is a second egg in the nest, I should add that. Two little white eggs. Um, they say you never see baby pigeons, um, but I feel that I'm very likely to see baby pigeons in the near future. Anyway, happy spring to you all. Um, <laughs> let's look at the puzzle. Sorry about all the waffle. Right, normal Sudoku rules apply. One to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Um, Digits along an arrow sum to the value in the connected circle, so those two add up to that one. 
and neighbouring digits on a green line, like those two, have a difference of at least five. Those are the rules. German whispers and arrows, very simple, not very much in the grid. Intriguing puzzle. Give it a try on the first link under the video. You may be put off like a recent one I did, when it, which I didn't expect to be hard, but by the video length, and I would understand that if that occurs, but we will see. Let's get cracking. Um, okay, what on earth do we do here? I was going to say that the, the squares, the blocks, always have the digits one, two, eight, and nine on. That's definitely not true. They can have a three or a seven. So a three would be accompanied by an eight and a nine. Say you had a three there, you could have eight and nine there, and then a lower digit here. So, okay, well, let's, uh, right, okay, let's push fives around. So there are three things about German whispers. One is that five can never appear on them because it can't have a satisfactory Sudoku neighbor. The second is that they alternate between higher higher digits than five and lower digits than five to maintain the difference. And the third thing is that <clears throat> four and six can be quite difficult to place on them because if the neighbors of four and six see each other, then it's impossible because four can only have one neighbor, which is nine. So four and six could never appear on this green square because if four was there, those would both be nine. However, on this one, which crosses a box border, be careful, because four could be on that. You could put a four there with two nines here. And certainly on these unfinished squares, you could put a four on one end with a nine next to it. So <clears throat> four and six are difficult, but not impossible to place on green lines. Now, okay, I'm gonna imagine the case in which five was in one of Five can't be on the green line here. So five is either in one of those three cells. And then I'm going to imagine the case where it's in one of those three. We'll see what happens. So if five was in one of those three, in box four it gets pushed into one of those two. In box five it gets pushed into one of those two. In box eight it gets pushed into one of those two on an arrow. And then it doesn't sit there anymore. So five in the case that it started in one of these three cells down the bottom of column one, would end up in those dominoes. Actually, there's also a five up here, I'll say including that cell. So then you would definitely have a five in one of those two to avoid the green cell there and, and the places where five is now ruled out by the dominoes we've posited. Now, the alternative case that I'm thinking of is five being in one of those cells because that does some damage too. That pushes five into one of those, which pushes five into one of those on the arrow, which pushes five into one of those, which eliminates five from there. And again, five is here. So five does have to be somewhere in one of these dominoes. I mean, I kind of could now, I think, chalk in fives into all of those cells. Because five's either in that domino or that domino, so it's never there. Either that one and that one, or that one and that one. That would put it on two arrows, which is interesting. Now, what about fours and sixes? Because again, they must appear here. Now I'm getting worried that this is impossible, <clears throat> which I think is very unlikely because it's even been through testing. So that's not the case. Um, why isn't the same true for fours and sixes? Because they get pushed around these four boxes in exactly the same way. They can't go on those greens. And yet four, five, and six is too many to put in a domino, oh, I see, they can be in separate. Yeah, I mean, exactly the same applies with fours and sixes. There is no difference. If you put a four in one of those cells, it has to go in one of those, one of those, one of those, not there. Now, up here, I can't do anything 
<coughs> in box one, because four can appear there, which is different from five. So I can't do any, ah, right. One of my main concerns was that four, five, and six would both have to go in those two cells, but this is the, the fact that one of them can escape onto one of these, or even both, means that that's not a problem. Okay, what I am going to do is colour some dominoes here. Let's have a yellow one. So whichever digit out of four, five, or six is in those cells, ends up in those, ends up in those, ends up in those. Whichever digit out of four, five, six is in these cells instead, ends up in those, ends up in those, ends up in those. I'm going to choose a different color for the purple because it obscures the arrow quite considerably. So, not green, let's do blue. Yeah, which interestingly doesn't obscure the arrow as much. Right, so fours, fives, and sixes... do appear in yellow and blue, but they're not the only digits that appear in yellow and blue. Another digit in those four, another digit in those four, another one in those four, another one in those four, and that other digit doesn't have to be the same. <clears throat> and I'm beginning to think it probably can't be the same. Right. Right. <clears throat> I was starting to wonder, could that be four or five? That's not the interesting question. The interesting question is about the fact that four, five, and six appear in this group of cells. So one of these arrows is made up with two of them, and that arrow adds up to nine, because it must be four and five. You can't put six together with either four or five and get a two-cell arrow sum. So one of these pairs adds up to nine, one of these circles is a nine, and that means this isn't a nine. But it is 6, 7, or 8. How do I know that? Because 4, 5, and 6 appear in these three cells in row 6, and therefore one of them gets on this arrow. And that pushes the total up to at least that area. And since this can't be a 9, it's 6, 7, or 8. Um, I don't know. Now I'm starting to worry about four and six, one of them being low and one of them being high, and what that does to the makeup of these boxes with the fact that this is too low and too high. Four, five, and six are in these. I don't know. Something, something is nagging at me about that. Now, maybe I should think about trying to work out which of these arrows is a 4-5. If that's the 4-5, this is 9. There's a 6 on this arrow. That digit is at least 7. Could be 9 again. And then, yeah... Whichever one of these is 4-5, that 4-5 pair goes in all the dominoes of that colour. So that would be 4-5, that would be 4-5, I mean I'm doing it in the wrong order, that would be 4-5, that would be 4-5, that would be 4-5. So either yellow or blue, as I've marked it in the grid, is always a 4-5 pair. And the other colour has a 6 on it. There we go, that explains which of yellow or blue is... 4, 5, because if you made blue 4, 5, one of these is a yellow 6, and this circle is 4 or 5, and that is illogical, impossible, and downright rude. So that's not what happens. So, blue is not 4, 5, yellow is 4, 5, we've done it. Well, <laughs> we've got the first element of a breakthrough, let's put it that way. I'm not sure that we've done it is the appropriate thing to say. Now, this is a nine. That's my first full digit in the grid. Before 10 minutes. I'm quite pleased with this puzzle because it's frying my brain already. Now, 
we can remove almost all the pencil marks. We can remove all those pencil marks. And what we can go to now is the fact that we know six is in blue. So actually that is a six. One of those is a six, one of those, one of those. Now, these have different accompaniments to make, oh, uh, well, that could be nine, okay. Seven, eight or nine there, seven or eight there. This is a six going with one or two. Now, what's in the circle, I'll tell you what's on this, yes, I will tell you what's on this green line is a three now. Oh, that is amazing, this is so clever. I'm actually starting to adore this puzzle. Three in this box goes on this green line. Three must be surrounded by eight and nine on the green line. That tells us that this circle is a seven. That tells us that this is a two, a six, one pair. And that tells us two is on the green block. This is now not a seven. This is either six, two or six, three. Can we pull the same stunt here? Probably can't. Okay, the two low digits on here are one and either two or three. Oh no, hang on, look, seven is now on this. We had to go down to box eight, not the symmetrical box seven. Seven being there, can't be there, it's now on this. The low digits it goes with are one and two. The other high digit in this box, is an, in the, on this square, is an eight. And this is a three, and that fixes this arrow. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely incredible. So this is an eight. Eight now, well, eight goes on this. No, much more importantly, three goes on this, because three is looking at that cell. So this is three, eight, nine, and the low digit is one. This is a seven. Oh my word, what a puzzle. Six is in this pair. Now, what can we do here? The high digits here don't include eight. So they are seven and nine. Seven needs to be accompanied with one and two. And this is a three, six pair. This is absolute poetry. Okay, we have one, two, nine up here by Sudoku. Obviously, there, there's got to be a high digit here. So nine is not in the corner. That is a very freeing pair though. Now, I thought what we worked out earlier was that either one or both of four, six go on here, but let's not rely on that. Let's instead put in a triple of one, two, eight here. Let's put in a triple of two, three, nine here. Let's put in a triple of one, two, eight here. Let's deduce the high digit there is a nine. The high digit there is an eight. Uh, let's get rid of the colouring we did because it's not really serving any further purpose. Right. Now I begin to get the sense that we're nothing like finished. Ah. Oh, I was just about to say that the low digit in this pair is clearly a three. I could have said the same for this pair. I cannot say either because it could be a four. Oh, it couldn't over this side because it would have to go with a nine and nine is in one of those two cells. Right, the low digit here is either three or four but it can't be four because it would have to go with nine so the low digit here is three. The high digit can't be nine so it's eight to go with three. They go together like pork and apple sauce. So a three eight pair there makes that a one nine pair. That's a three eight pair. The one nine pair comes out of there. Two seven comes out of there. Now, come on. Nine is the high digit here because the low digit is three or four. And we can't have a four because it would be looking through a border onto an eight. <laughs> so there's another three. There's two threes on this square. That's a three nine pair. We can do this again. Two eight comes out of there. 2-8 comes out of there, 1-7 comes out of there, and we've reduced almost, well, all of boxes 4, 5, 7, 8 have been reduced to pairs, which is fascinating and bizarre. And that 1-7 pair resolves this 6-1. That's, well, that's going to be a 4, because we know it's not a 5 because of the pencil marking. So 4 there, 5 there, 4 there. 2-7 are looking at that cell. 
This is four or five in this column as well because of all the pairs and it's not four. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. What a puzzle, one, nine, five, two, three, eight. There are puzzles where you sometimes get the feeling that you've suddenly looked right into the compiler's mind. For me, this is one of them. Absolutely fascinating. Five, six, seven there, that's not a five. One of those is, that's a six, seven pair. Hmm, that's just forcing middly digits out of this, which is unsurprising. I don't want to do any more than that there. Um, now, which extreme or which monogamous digit goes here? Four definitely does, but we knew nine was there anyway. I don't know. Oh, we've got this going on as well. This can't have a one or a two on it. So its low digit is either three or four, and its high digit therefore has to be eight or nine, but it's not eight. So its high digit is nine, along with three or four, and that can't be nine now. So that's going to do a passel of work down here. In fact, no. Can I resolve this stuff? Not sure that I can. Oh, I don't like that. Oh no, something's gone wrong. Uh-oh. Right, what has gone wrong is I've said 128 was the triple there, and it's 189. I've just misread this row. Okay, good. So the high, the low digit there is a one. So this is nine or eight. I was wondering why they were both low, and it's because I'm a numpty. Anyway, we're okay at this point. I'm sorry about having the wrong pencil marks in there for a while. Sorry if you were shouting that at me. But I have noticed now, because it all went wrong here. Now, can I still do anything with this? Yes, I know that the high digit is a 7, and the low digit is therefore a 2, because it can't be 1. Well, let's hope that works better. 7, 2, 8, 1, 9, 1. Keep using the whisper technology, and we get 8 and 3. 4 or 5 in the corner. These are from 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, we can't put 5 on the green, and we, well, we could again put both 4 and 6. Okay, what next? These can't have a six. Mm. So what, I hear you say? Are we going to have to sort out? Okay, one of these is a four. I bet it's this row where that can't occur. Okay, what would happen is that would be a four, that would be a nine. That would become a three and that would become an eight. And we'd have used up two very high digits in the row. So we wouldn't have any left for here, which would have to be a seven with a one or a two, which would form a triple with that. Leave a five, six pair. Seven, one, two and a high digit there. It seems to work all right. I assumed we're kind of going to have to disambiguate rows two and three, and surely using this green block. And does anything go wrong in row three? If we put four there, nine here, three, eight. Ah. Well, what's interesting about that is one of one or two ends up here. Oh my goodness, that might fail because it's weird that this row should have less freedom, but it's kind of in a way because it pushes the, the trouble up here in the box. So let me work this out again, four, nine, three, eight there. One of one or two is in these cells. Therefore, the two low digits here include three and the two high digits are eight and nine. 
One of one or two is in those cells, the other one is now there. Yeah, there's some problem with AIDS. Am I right about this? Four, nine, three, eight. One of one or two goes here. This is now three, eight, nine, and the other of one or two. Oh no, that's too many. One, two, three, eight, nines. Oh, that's mad. Right, this is right. If that was four, that's nine by whispers. That's three and that's eight by Sudoku. Then that can be one or two and has to be, but one of these has to be one or two. Now that's one out of the digits one, two, three, eight, nine, which are five digits. And one of them is in this group of yellow cells. That is pushing three well, it makes the two low digits on this block include three. And that puts eight and nine in these cells along with another one or two. And that's four more of the digits, one, two, three, eight, nine, i.e. all five of them have been used up in the yellow area. And what can that poor cell be? I've pencil marked it with five digits and it turns out it needed a sixth. So my normal over pencil marking has paid off big time here. And that means this is not the 4-9 row. Astonishingly, it's this much busier row gets the 4-9. I think this is going to be very helpful for us. 4, 9, 3, 8. I will just concentrate on this row for a bit. 7 is the high digit that goes on here and goes with a 1 or a 2. So that is a triple. Then we're left with a 5-6 pair. OK, let's run this down. That's low. That's high. I don't actually know which is which. That's three. That's nine. Now, I must still be able to do something else. I think that's, yes. No, now we don't have the quintuple going on there. Necessarily. Yes, we do. Seven, two, and one. Because seven is on this green block, two and one are definitely on it. Ah, so that's not one or two, but much more importantly, none of those are one or two. So where do one and two go in this row? One of them is there, the other one is here. That's now a one, two pair, that becomes eight. Now the other high digit on here is not eight, it must be nine, and that's a one, two, seven, nine quad. That now can't be nine, which is in one of those cells, or eight, which is there, so that's three. That's going to make this two. Let's look down the grid and do a bit of work. Seven and two there. One, two, seven, nine. These are from four, five, six, eight. And they must include four and eight. Ah, and I think we kind of got the work done we needed. That was weird stuff. But now let's go down the grid. So we've got three and nine there. Wherever three is, it needs eight up here above it. So one of those is eight, and that's going to fix some stuff on these green boxes. All of them, because we can use the whisper rules to get round them. Three and nine there. That fixes three and six. Now, these cells are from four, five, six, eight. One of them is opposite nine, though, and that's got to be four. So this is now a four-eight pair. That becomes five, that becomes six. We've got a four there. We've finished a couple of three boxes in total. Uh, one, five, seven, that's not a seven. This is not a six. No, that's not a six. Am I gonna finish column seven suddenly? That's the only place for nine in it. I am, look at that, brilliant. This is so clever, that's become a six. Seven there is going to sort out this because it makes that a six. Oh, it doesn't fix the one two pair because the whisper isn't strong enough for that. Let's do this stuff. One eight there. Eight is going to be opposite three. One is going to be opposite six. That's a five. Um, that's a five. That's a seven. 
that's not seven. So that's seven, that's nine. These are the two one pair. This must finish somehow, obviously. Although it looks a bit deadly patterny at this point. Um, ah, we've got a nine there looking at that cell. I think two would have done it as well from the bottom looking up. Right, three and six, we can run that around the whisper. One and eight, four and eight, four and six, one and two, one and two, one and two. What a brilliant puzzle. It is so pure, so perfect, and so clever. I mean, this is the thing with the constructors on this channel who send us puzzles. The ones we get to feature are just top notch again and again. That is an incredibly clever puzzle. I mean, literally, I'm inclined like my pigeons to say coo at the end of that because I'm blown away by how good that is. Really entertaining stuff from Arbitrary. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a go at that and found found all the magic in the same sort of way I did. Let's hope there's not easier ways to do some of it because the way I, the way I found myself doing it seemed so brilliant um, by the constructor, not by me. Thank you so much for watching us on the channel. As always, do engage with us in some way. We love it when you comment, especially when you're nice to the constructors who literally deserve it all the time. And um, I will wish you a very good day and hope to see you next time. Bye for now.